We talked last time about arithmetic and geometric series, but we talked about series that had finite means to them. In other words, they ended. You'll see below I have two series, the numbers 1 through 51, and adding those up, call that finite because it ends. And then if you see something that goes and ends with a dot, 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 that's an infinite series. What we're going to do today is we're going to find an equation of an infinite series. You'll notice that if I have an arithmetic that goes on forever, in other words, like this case, my difference is 2, and I add 2 forever and ever, this will never have a sum. So the sum is infinite. If I have a situation where I have a geometric, and I'm multiplying by a ratio that's greater, in this case 2, forever and ever, this will keep going up forever and ever, and this sum will be infinite. So we can say either the sum is infinite or there is no sum because it just keeps going. But when I've got something like this, I'm adding a half plus a fourth plus an eighth plus a sixteenth, a thirty-second. These numbers keep getting smaller and smaller, and eventually... Because my ratio is a half in this case, I'm never going to go below zero, so it'll never go negative, which means that even though I'm adding over and over and over again, my sum or my, my value for the nth term is getting smaller and smaller, so eventually it's going to one over some really small number on to infinity. So it's approaching zero, but what really happens to the sum? Well, let's take a look. If I look at my equation and notice that for any geometric pattern, I've got the first term plus the ratio raised to the nth power over 1 minus the ratio. If this ratio is less than 1, right, we're claiming that all of our infinite series are going to have sums. And here's what happens. If you would take just on your calculator and do this, take uh, any ratio less than one. I could take something like a ratio of a half and raise that to a large power. Let's say, oh, a hundred. You'll notice if I take a half to the hundredth power on a calculator, I end up with 7 times 10 to the negative 31st power. Point 0.7. So that's 31 zeros in front of the 7. At the 100th term, you're pretty much close to 0. So what's really happening, as I get bigger and bigger with n, this r raised to the n power gets closer and closer actually to 0. And it really does approach zero. So what I'm really left with is I'm left with the sum equaling the first term over one minus the ratio because this ratio to the nth power went to zero. So we can now write an equation stating that anytime I have an infinite geometric series where the ratio in absolute value is less than one, I can use the following formula. Take the first term, divide it by 1 minus the ratio, and I get the sum of the infinite series. So let's go ahead and explore a couple of problems. Here's an infinite series. First thing I'd have to do is prove that it's geometric, and it's pretty easy to see that my ratio in this case is 1 over 10. So I have r less than 1 in absolute value. And I can use the formula of the first term, which is 1 15th, over 1 minus my ratio, which is 1 15th. And I get 9 tenths here, divided by 9 tenths, multiplied by the reciprocal, get 1 15th times 10 over 9. These reduce. It's a 3 down here, 2 up here, 
I'm left with 2 27ths. And if I add these numbers forever and ever, this will approach. Won't quite actually get there, but it's close enough. It's never going to go over 2 over 27. Now, if I want to find the sum of the following series here, again, I have to show that I have a ratio that's less than 1, and it's got to be an absolute value. It appears that I've got a multiple of a half in this case, and since it alternates from positive and negative, the ratio must be a negative. So we can clearly say that this ratio in absolute value is less than 1. So let's go ahead and use our formula of the first term. It's equal sum is equal to that first term over 1 minus my ratio. And we just said that was negative a half. So we end up with 3 eighths over 3 halves or 3 eighths divided by 3 halves goes to 3 eighths times 2 thirds, or we get a quarter. The infinite geometric is the easiest to calculate. You just have to make sure you've got a ratio that is less than 1 in absolute value. If you don't, then there's going to be no sum. So we've got, do my math lab, we'll Talk about it after we look at your summary tonight. Bye.